Broussard, my guy. Haven't seen you in a minute, buddy. How you living? I'm great, man. How are you doing? But look, b- before we get into whatever else you want to talk about, first mm. things first, that list, how is Josh Allen number one? Now, he ha- he's having a nice year. Lamar Jackson is about to be the MVP. The only question is, will he be unanimous? How can he not be number one? And if you notice with Allen, his during this six-game win streak, his numbers haven't been great, at least his passing numbers. Obviously, he's rushed for a lot of touchdowns. But his numbers haven't been great passing the football during this win streak. So, Mahomes, let me, I'll end it here. As long as you admit, who's the best quarterback on that list? Not this year, but period. For, for his career? Yeah, just period. Like, oh, who's the best Patrick Mahomes has had the best list? career. MVP, Super okay. Bowl MVP. As long as you give me – well, he's the best quarterback, uh, right? This season? As long as you give me that. Period. W- what's wrong with period. Mahomes this season, Chris? Why is he struggling? He's got no receivers. They oh, led really? the league in drops. They don't get open. They don't create space. He's got a tight end, an old tight end who's, you know, bit bang, been banged up and is showing a little wear and tear from his great career – but those receivers, that's the main problem with Kansas City. Oh. It's not Patrick Mahomes. I'll give you, he's not having a great year, though. So, but a lot of it's on those receivers. So you're only as good as your receivers? No, I'm saying, first of all, he's not having a horrible year. I'm just saying he's not having your typical Patrick Mahomes season. But a lot of it is because he has no wide receivers. Okay, fair enough. Let's, let's drill down on the Chiefs How a little time, more. Right, right. I'm sure you yeah. saw the report from Mike Florio, uh, P. Um, Pro Football Talk that Andy Reid could step down after the season. Not the first time we've heard it, Chris. Like, listen, right. uh, Chiefs kind of on the struggle bus. I, uh, I like them this weekend against Buffalo, but man, could Reid step away? He turns sixty six in March. A lot of free agents. Um, Mahomes' cap hit goes up twenty million dollars next season. Your thoughts? Well, I, I think the way you're couching it is him saying, "Wow, we we we're not as good this year as we have been." It's really been a struggle, and next year we could be worse, or in the future we could be worse. I think if he retires, those won't be the reasons. Um, He's obviously said he hasn't thought about it, but obviously you wouldn't want to make yourself the story, right, if indeed he was going to step down. He wouldn't want to say it right now. Um, So I I think that if he does step down, it's just because he's ready to move on from football. I can't imagine he would step down and want to go somewhere else. You got Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback I've ever seen in, in my life. And, um, and I, don't, I don't think, Jason, that they're going to be worse in the future. I think they're going to be better. That defense is great this year. And I think it's going to remain great for the foreseeable future. And offensively, the run game is great. The line has struggled a bit this, this year, but I think that can get better. And all they need are some legitimate receivers. I think they go out and get one really good receiver, and then they're set and they're back to being, you know, a team that could win the Super Bowl. They're still that right now, but they're better next year. So I don't think if he steps down, J-Mac, I don't think it has anything to do with him saying our run is over because I don't think the run is over. Okay. Uh, all right, Broussard, let's go to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. You've been beating them up on your show, man. You've been going after them hard. Um, not as hard as Cam Newton came after me yesterday. Am but I wrong? Hard. Uh, not totally. <laughs> Three straight 12-win seasons is uh, nice. The playoffs are a failure. I'm, I'm just curious. What do you – talk me through your thoughts on what happens with Dak this offseason in Dallas. It's simple to me. As much as Dak was a disappointment in the playoffs, and it was – you can't even overstate how disappointing he was, right? You got to bring him back. You have to bring him back. And I I, obviously they're going to have to sign him to an extension. You don't want him playing on that $59 million cap hit. So you want to sign other guys, so you got to get that down. So you sign him to a long-term extension. Look, I think I try to talk to Dak about, hey, your number one goal we know – It's to win a Super Bowl. It's not just to be the highest paid player. It's not just to have individual accolades. It's to win a Super Bowl. Look at the GOAT, Tom Brady. How'd he do it? He he didn't quite take as much as he could get. He always left a little money on the table to sign better teammates. Whether New England did that or not, that was Brady's approach. And that's how the Cowboys should approach Dak. Like, look. We know you're great, and we're willing, you know, 55 million right now, Joe Burrow is the top. 
We're willing to give you in that $50 million range, 51-ish, but let's leave a little money on the table to get better players around you so you and we can win some Super Bowls. Mm. You appeal to that. Now, Dak may just say, hey, I want to reset the market like every other quarterback that comes up. And fine, if that's what he wants to do, that's his prerogative. But that's how I would approach him. But, J-Mac, they can't let him go because you do, it could be five or ten years before they got another, like, good, really good quarterback. And he is really good. And you, you, Peyton Manning didn't win a Super Bowl till his ninth year. And he was criticized as a guy that's great regular season, doesn't do it in the postseason, was three and six in the playoffs up until Mm. that Super Bowl run. So, look, I think you can win a Super Bowl with Dak. I would go J-Mac after a Derrick Henry. I think they need Mm. a meat eater at running back to compliment Tony Pollard. And then you need a little more size on your defensive end, uh, defensive side of the ball. But I think they're not that far away. So, yeah, I would definitely sign Dak. I like the Derrick Henry thing. Uh, let me ask, do you think Jerry, after that loss Sunday, reached out to Harbaugh and Belichick just to back channel and see, is there interest in the gig? And then once he heard no, he just said, all right, we're going to stick with McCarthy for one more. I don't think he did. I huh. mean, I haven't seen any reports that suggest he did. He should have. Shame on him, J. Mack, <laughs> that he didn't, if indeed he did. I would have definitely called Belichick. Now, Harbaugh's a different story. Harbaugh may be looking at his next stop as a long-term affair, mm. right, as he should. And he and Jerry probably would butt heads long-term. Jerry doesn't want the microphone to be out of his face, the camera to be off of his person. He wants to still be the face of the franchise, doing all the talking. I think a Belichick or, a Co- or even a Harbaugh – Probably, not probably, wouldn't like that. And I think that would be a part of the conversation. Hey, you know, we got to do things a little bit differently. But if I'm Jerry, I'm with Belichick. What's Belichick got? Three, four years left as a head coach? You can do that for three or four years. And the problem with Jerry, with him wanting all the attention, he doesn't understand one key thing, J-Mac. If, if we didn't hear a peep from Jerry all next season, right, If he goes totally dark, doesn't do his weekly radio shows, doesn't speak after every game, and they won the Super Bowl, he would get all the credit. He would get, or he would get his his fair share of the credit. He would be the one. We don't hear from Clark Hunt, Robert Kraft during the season, but guess who's handed the Super Bowl trophy? The owner. And Jerry Jones would get credit if he went out and got a Bill Belichick and Belichick wanted him to step back a little and they won a Super Bowl because of it. No one would rip Jerry. They would praise him for going to get the coach to lead them to a Super Bowl. But he doesn't understand that. So they continue to do what they've been doing for 29 years without success. Uh, I I know you do a lot of public speaking. I'm just curious. Do you think that someone could get through to the billionaire and be like, bro, step back? Just be quiet. Or is that just Mission Impossible? It's probably Mission Impossible because with all his money, he obviously has power, (laughs) right? Um, But I would think a Belichick might, you know, obviously Belichick has tons of clout and listening to a Belichick talk to him about it might help. But maybe J-Mac, that's why he didn't call him. (laughs) That's why else would you not call Bill Belichick? And I've been a critic of Belichick without Brady hasn't done squat without Tom Brady but in Dallas that team is ready they just need a culture change they need a little bit of improvement on defense and you already have the quarterback in Dak so I think Belichick could go there and maybe win them a Super Bowl all right let's go to Belichick real quick he's interviewing for the second time with Atlanta or he's interviewing Atlanta however you want to phrase it um I gotta ask like do you think this is a leverage play for a different job, or do you think he can really go to Atlanta? Because, I don't know, just, like, culturally, Belichick doesn't seem to vibe with what that franchise and city are. I, 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 it's difficult for me to see, but it sounds like maybe it's happening. I don't know. Well, no, you make a good point. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a cultural fit, but I don't think it's a good fit for Belichick or for the Falcons. Like, mm. I wouldn't be going after Belichick if I was Atlanta. And if I'm Belichick, I really wouldn't be that interested. Now, if they go out and get a Kirk Cousins, then, okay, now we're talking. But if Belichick just wants to go ahead and win his 15 games to catch Don Shula as all-time winning his coach, 
then, yeah, you can do that in Atlanta in that division in, in probably two years. But if he wants to win a Super Bowl to catch Tom Brady, which is what I think he wants to do, why are you going to Atlanta? He needs to go someplace that's ready-made, that has a quarterback. We've seen him, J-Mac, without a quarterback. It's not pretty. All right, it won't be – they'll be pretty good in Atlanta. They do have a lot of talent outside of the QB position. But Russell Wilson and eh. Justin Fields, I mean – could be good. We don't know exactly what Fields is, and I don't love Belichick with young quarterbacks. I yeah. mean, you saw what he did to Mac Jones. So, no, I don't think that's a fit. I think he needs to go somewhere ready-made. All right, I want to squeeze in one Lakers question, obligatory NBA. I know you're a big NBA guy. You covered the league forever. Um, Lakers fans, as they are wont to do, are panicking, despite the nice wins recently. Um, <laughs> do we need yeah. to make a trade? Do we trade Austin Reeves? Blah, blah, blah. LeBron. It's, you know, it's the usual. I just looked it up. Lakers are currently 10th in the West. It, it's not out of the realm. Yep. Anthony Davis has been healthy and LeBron's been healthy, which is the scary part. Like, those two have been healthy and playing, and they're still 10th in the West. I don't know. Your thoughts about the uh, Lakers as we get, what, within three weeks of the deadline? Well, like you said, it's interesting. And remember, a few weeks ago, people were really panicking, talking about Darvin Ham needs to go despite winning the in-season tournament, tournament, whatever you think that's worth. Um, and, but the thing is, Jamie, they've played in spurts, right? They've had their downs, but then they've beaten some good teams recently. And so, I look, you don't want to be in the play-in because you don't want to be in a one-and-done type yeah. of situation. You'd like to get in the top seven. Uh, but in the playoffs, you look at the top of the West right now outside of Denver. Minnesota, now I like them a lot. Best defensive team in the league right now. Obviously got great offensive scores in Edwards, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. They're a strong team. Mike Conley staying healthy is big for them too. Yeah. But them and OKC, J-Mac, they're young. They're young. And Minnesota's not that young, but they don't have any deep playoff experience, right, outside of Gobert, who's not their leader or star. And so – they're a question mark going into the playoffs. OKC is a question mark. So if you're the Lakers, you're wondering, okay, can our experience with LeBron and AD and our intelligence, our basketball IQ, can we overcome a team like that in a seven-game series? I'm not saying they definitely can, but you have to give them a shot against one of these younger teams just because LeBron and AD are still playing well and they have the experience. Okay, sorry, one more. But they do more. need to make a move if they can. Yeah. Because if they can, I don't know exactly what move is out there for them, but they, they need to add a little something. Yeah, one more, sorry. Joel Embiid, I know you and I have disagreed greatly on Embiid. The guy's never been to a conference finals, Chris, okay? Is this finally the year that the great Joel Embiid, the MVP Joel Embiid, gets to a conference finals? Uh, look, what I'll say, Embiid is playing phenomenal, yes. Jamie. I, I think you would admit that, yes. right? Like. This is the best he's ever played. Like, he looks like the best player in the league right now. And I think it's Jokic. I'm just saying you could argue for Embiid right now. Okay. Especially because of the defense. But the problem for Embiid in the playoffs has been, one, he ha his production has dropped drastically. All right? He's not quite James Harden territory, <laughs> but he's inching that way. Right? But I think one of the reasons his production drops is because he's always banged up. Like, he either ha he usually has to sit out a few games in the playoffs, and then when he comes back and plays, he's not quite 100%. And that's the problem with Joel Embiid. If he goes into these playoffs 100%, then they got a shot. I mean, Milwaukee, we know, hasn't been as great as we expected. Uh, Boston's going to be tough. I mean, obviously, they're undefeated at home. They'll be tough to deal with. But Philly would be right there and have a shot if Embiid is – Fully healthy, doesn't have to sit out games, and is not limping around the court. All right, that's the great Chris Broussard. First things first, follows the herd. I'm sure him and Nick will try to carve up my Patrick Mahomes take, my Andy Reid take. That's, that's what they do. They're, they're Chiefs guys over there, Chris. Yeah, you're reaching. You're Enjoy reaching, the games, man. buddy. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.